guys, welcome back to the show. And yes, our next guest is Dr. Ungozi Omar Bala, who is the group managing director and CEO of NMO Management. And she's also the chairperson of Creative and Entertainment Group, LCCI Lagos, Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And of course, she's not a stranger as we show. Welcome to the show, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> good to have you me. <laughs> Good to have you again. Is it the second time this year or the first time this year? Um, it was multiple times last year. Last year. Last yeah. year, I think I think yeah. I was like a, I felt like a, a member oh, of the yes. team, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but this year, it's been kind of like um, I, you know I've been in and out of the country, mm -hmm. the LCCI, and all of our wow. events. So okay. not so often, but I'm glad to be back. Nice to have it's you like again. Like being back with my family. Nice exactly. one. Nice to have you here. So the conversation is about elevating Nigeria's creative and entertainment industry, and of course. Uh, the fact is that you play a very pivotal role in shaping the creative and entertainment industry. And we're going to be discussing some of the challenges, some of the opportunities and initiatives aimed at the sector. So can you just give us like a brief overview of the Nigerian creative industry and sort of like its contribution to the national economy, you know? Yes. Um, I think it's, it's, been a, it's been a journey. It's been a personal journey and, and um, a professional one alongside Silverbird as well. I think Silverbird has been there from the very beginning of my career up until um, now. The industry has really um, changed, the narrative has changed, the landscape is really dynamic, it's constantly changing. And that's a good thing. Um, I think there are pros and cons to, to both, both of those aspects. But um, in general, I think um, when we first started about 2007, um, there weren't very many people within the sector, not many women particularly. So. But um, as you can see now, the industry is just like growing in leaps and bounds, growing exponentially. You, you can see what's happened to our entertainment sector. Mm. Our artists and our global icons, superstars across the globe. Would we have thought that like 10, 13 years ago when we were working within the industry, just really kind of like grappling and just finding our feet. So I think um, it's, it's really, I think we have to respect the fact that our creatives are really like self-motivators. The fact that we've done this on our own without mm. any government support, you know, it's, it's grown organically and we've reached really the pinnacle of our success without any government support. So where I come in, in terms of the LCCI, can you imagine what we can do with support, with resources, with investment, with care mm. and attention? So that's where I'm coming in with the LCCI and I'm really, really honoured and, and I feel, you know, in a, in a really... Um, advantageous position to be able to help, help hopefully so. kind of steer that narrative to to better to you know really escalate it mm. upscale the industry make it less you know we know it's very informal not people not many people really understand mm -hmm. how it actually works um, it's a very complex um, narrative with our with our society but at the end of the day I feel that um, we've made um, such huge progress um, there are still a lot of challenges mm -hmm. within the industry which we have to um, address. But really what we're doing is taking it to the next level, mm -hmm. to the next level of standardization, formalizing the industry, protecting our artists. Mm -hmm. We know, you know, so, so many artists are very vulnerable. They have families. Yes. And um, what happens when the artists are no longer there? We haven't really made an, any provision for, for that. And that's what upscaling is all about you know, formalizing the industry, so to speak, and protecting mm. our creatives. It's really important. Awesome. Let's talk about the key sectors that, um, you know, the LCCI is focusing on and also at the moment, and also the ones that you're looking to focus on in, you know, the coming years, amongst other things. Well, I mean, I, I've always, even before the LCCI, I've always been, as you know, pushing within the platforms that I have, um, Loud and Proud Live, GBT Auditions, Pan-African Music Fashion Runway, there's always been an element of pushing the upcoming artists. The upcoming narrative is so important because our creators, our young creators, are, are, are very important contributors to our GDP. As I've said, we've seen what the creators are doing within fashion, music, film, visual, the visual arts, theatre. And don't forget about the people behind the scenes as well. I mean, you know, we're in a studio now. You've got camera operators, you've got producers, you've got directors. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that really make the magic happen. You know, you people are the end product, which is fantastic, but let's not forget about the production itself. So these are the people that we, we really need to empower. And education is key. 
Um, our sector, as I said, it's very fragmented, but within the LCCI, and, and it's, it's really great that I've got um, a fantastic you know, um, support from our president. Our president, Ashiwaju um, Olawaleko, is an amazing visionary, mm. supporting women, pushing the entertainment sector. And um, it's so nice to be part of a progressive organization. You know when we creatives come in, it's just like, and you're coming into a corporate sector, everybody's like, you know, what the hell is going on? But they've really given me mm. an open narrative to like pursue. And they understand that, you know, the young people are really the future. They're the ones who are pushing forward. This is our succession. So for me, it's always been an important thing to be pushing our youth. Well, well what are some of the hurdles that, you know, this industry faces? Because there's so many challenges. And what is your group doing to address some of those challenges? Well, you know, I've hit the road running when it comes to being the chairperson of the entertainment creative, the creative and entertainment group. And there's so much work to do, um, I won't lie, and, and no man is an island, so the support is really Im important. The LCCI has got 27 trade chambers, and each of those really, there's a lot of interconnectivity between, between all of them, so it's really like um, a very, very strong network of companies within the private sector that can really help, help each other. So um, we're, you know, the, I think our creative sector is all about connectivity, relationships, so I'm really kind of like taking advantage of the fact that we have those chambers. So I've aligned myself with the women's group. I've aligned myself with the host hospitality industry, even agriculture. So it's, and for me, I'm learning as well, but I'm seeing, you know, the connections and how it can work. But the challenges are, are huge. As I said, I think um, we need to, alliances and partnerships are key to really upscaling and consolidating the industry. So for instance, um, as I said, you know, some of our creatives and our artists are very vulnerable. Yes. So I've, I've um, made it, you know, my, my real kind of like push to, to get maybe some of the, in, you know, the insurance companies mm. on board to really buffer any problems that we might have. So for instance, Royal Exchange are a key partner in what we're doing. We've also set up a entertainment village, which is part of the Lagos Trade Fair. It comes on every year, 300,000 people coming through the gates over that 10-day period. I was there last year, and there was no, not very much. In fact, there was zero, zero entertainment. But this year, we have an entertainment village oh, nice. um, at the Cricket Ground, accommodating 1,000 people. We've already got most of our media people on board, 10 days of entertainment, um, corporations, the corporate sector, and the entertainment sector are merging together. So this is new. It's a new phenomenon within, within, our, within okay. our sector. And it's the way that we're going to consolidate and strengthen the industry moving forward. Wow. OK. Tell you what, though. Let's go on a quick break. Mm -hmm. We know that there's so many people out there that might have uh, a few things they want to ask or you know, suggestions and comments. So we'll go on that break. When we get back, we'll do some more talking. Don't forget, it's uh, uh, WCW Today, mm -hmm. Women's Crush Wednesday. And we're still having our very special guest in the studio. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, you're welcome back. It's still Silverbird today. Mm -hmm. And if you just joined us, you've missed a ton of good stuff, but you're just in time for the final stretch of the show. Dr. Ngozi Obambala, chairperson of the Creative and uh, Entertainment Group of LCCI, mm -hmm. is our very special guest today. And we've been talking so much about a lot of things. Uh, but really quickly, I want us to talk about intellectual property and copyrights as far as the entertainment and creative industry is concerned. What is your take on that and what are you doing about it? Well, I have actually, I, I think um, I was one of the first to raise a narrative about um, intellectual property. It's something that's been bothering me for a long time. It's so important for our artists to have protection and know their rights and not sign their lives away in these contracts. Mm. So um, my, my, my take on that is um, just beware, be careful, educate yourself. Entertainment lawyers at the LCCI were actually going to be participating in workshops. I'm calling on a lot of the, the entertainment lawyers to come on board and just give very basic and very simple um, tutorials about just basic contractual law in terms of how you, you don't have to sign, you know, contracts that are to eternity. You know, you're not a slave to, you know, if anything, you're the one who's got the content. Mm -hmm. So you are the asset, not necessarily the record company or the management company. Mm. Remember, they can't exist without you. So intellectual prop protecting your asset, your intellectual property, is vital. This is your career. It could be a long, could be a lifelong career. Mm. What's going to happen in old age if your property is actually owned by a multinational? 
we've heard stories about a lot of actors, you know, really in, in their, their older years, mm. not being able to fend for themselves, medical, medical costs, that okay. kind of thing. Protecting your intellectual property will okay. mitigate that. Let's, let's also look at um, access to funding, which can be a barrier to growth um, if you don't get funding. And the role that um, financial institutions, venture capitalists and investors sort of play in helping to support creatives. You know, what are, how can entrepreneurs tap into this? Well, it's, it's an and area that, you know, what you've got to realize is corporate companies are very, very risk adverse. And if they don't understand, wouldn't invest. Then they're not going to invest. So it's our responsibility to educate, to give the transparency, to you know just bring them in and let them understand this is how it works and this is the gains you can make. Because actually, it's actually a very simple conundrum: profit mm. versus talent. Yeah. And if we marry the two, it's win-win for everybody. So it's just a case of like marrying the two and creating an enabling environment mm. so that everybody is on a winning streak. So I just th think it's a matter of time, um, education and transparency, yes. and um, just creating you know, workshops. You know, the entertainment village that we have to, um, coming, coming up um, between the 3rd and, and the 12th mm. of um, November, part and parcel of the Lagos International Trade Fair, but a standalone um, entertainment village. We've got corporate companies, as I said, Royal Exchange is one of the premium sponsors of the entertainment village. Yet we have a company like Laura Beauty, Laura KG, she's, she's showcasing as well. We have Accelerate TV, they're coming on board. We've got the media houses, we've got Rhythm, Rhythm FM coming on board. Yeah. Trace, all of your competitors as well. So it's just a marrying of all, you know, I'm one, I like to bring people together because I feel that there's a lot of synergy that can be made. Not everybody sees it, but once it's working, then everybody will see it. And I think that's how our industry is going to develop and evolve. All right. Definitely. Um, just to wrap up really quickly, let's talk about the future and let's also talk about, you know, closing remarks, things that we can all take away from this conversation as far as creative and entertainment is concerned. The future's bright. I think the future's bright for um, Nigeria, for our creatives, for um, the, the, the economy. Um, I feel that, um, you know, with an administration that understands what the creative sector can do for the economy once and i think people are beginning to see the light it's happening so um i'm i'm very optimistic about the future of our creative mm -hmm. industry certainly within the position position that i have i i, I know it's a very pivotal position i know it it can you know evoke yeah, a lot of change so i'm very aware of my position and and, and what it can do so really marginalized groups i want to bring on board you know people who are, who are partially you know cited physically challenged, inclusivity, women, all of us have got something to contribute towards mm. our society. And you know, at the end of the day, we're a global economy. Mm. And I think Africa has got, to, has got a really oh, strong case, to, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm very, very um, optimistic and um, looking forward to it. And it's, it's, it's a great journey so far for me, mm. so I'm very happy. Thank you so much, Dr. Ngozi. We have more questions because of time. Uh, we can't take it, but I know the conversation starts now, and I'm sure the LCCI uh, will be willing out more initiatives and programs, and just creatives uh, and entrepreneurs uh, can be part and plug themselves because you're also a part of this one wonderful new thing. And um, the, the industry will definitely get bigger and better. Thank you so much. Uh, for coming on the show. And also, uh, I must say that it's a woman crush Wednesday. So we've had <laughs> amazing women on the show from Ayinka Kweke and also you two are coming through. Thank you so much. And we're celebrating birthdays. Yes, right? we are. Yes, mm -hmm. we are. Okay, so uh, we'd like to wish our very own director, Maz. Okay. Uh, happy birthday, of course. Happy birthday. Happy first birthday to you, mm -hmm. my precious jewel. That's uh, Kenneth Chukuzui Francis. You will live long to fulfill your purpose. And of course, this is from Mazi Francis uh, and family. And yeah. also from us here at the Silverbird production team, uh, we wish you a happy, happy birthday. Yeah, that's baby Joel Zoe, the very best. And wishing the family strength to carry on. Oh, happy birthday, Joel. <laughs> baby Joel Zoe. And um, of course, our word of the day is we cannot really, really love anybody with whom we've never laughed with. So if you never laugh to anyone, then you don't really love a person. It's just so dry. <laughs> Agnes, exactly. like, that's what it is. It is actually. It's true. <laughs> is it true? It is true. It is true. <laughs> so, it is true. Well, you can laugh with people and not like them. I don't know. 
That's but the people, fake, though. But you, the people you laugh at the most are the people you really like. I love. Okay, yes, guys. Definitely. Thank you so much. We've had a beautiful Wednesday Crush um, show. Thank you so much for sticking with us. I will be here again for Thursday. And you know how we roll on Thursday. It's our throwback show. So please enjoy your beautiful day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.